Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, I can finally get a haircut because, well, the title of the video. I got a part time day before yesterday. It's kind of a challenge to get a part time in ASU because uh, there are so many applicants. Almost like every job posting has around 150, 200, probably more applicants, and they are all like basic entry level jobs like a desk assistant or uh, some research aid so everybody's qualified for it there's no uh, question of skill or talent for the most part so it's mostly like based on luck it's like a lottery thing that 200 people will apply uh, the recruiter will pick up like the first two they'll obviously be eligible and qualified for the job because well you, you the requirement is pretty low the bar is very low so they'll probably be qualified and then they get in right so this way i think 90 percent of getting an on-campus part-time is mostly uh, luck okay so a couple of things that might be useful to someone looking for an on-campus or like future students who will be joining asu in fall or let's say next spring whatever whenever they're watching this video i think the number of people from asu watching this video will probably right now be five less than five i don't know but it might be useful later okay so first of all stats i applied to 507 job openings in a span of like a month so my first application was on 9th january i joined asu on 9th like my first class was on 9th and i took some time to like create my resume and stuff so uh, it's advisable to start up, uh, applying like before you arrive on campus as well uh, but I, I was a little late on that that's fine uh, from 9th jan and i had an offer uh, like the first offer that i got was on 11th feb so roughly a month so one month 507 applications the number of positive responses that i got was nine so the percentage is around 1.77 percent right so that's pretty low the issue is that i think people take a lot of time essentially to apply i think they do like 500 or like 600 applications in a semester so a lot of people do not get on campus jobs uh, initially in the first semester but i think prioritizing the applications and like doing a lot of applications really worked in my favor that that's the only thing because there's no like skill or talent as such involved because these are all very entry level jobs 95 or 96 percent of these jobs are do not require any like technical skill whatsoever they're like desk assistant research assistant technical assistant clerk all all of these jobs so they're not about like a skilled person does not have an edge for the most part somebody who is doing more applications has almost always the edge also just to mention the 507 job applications that i did are only on the asu portal i did not apply to any dining jobs or like aramark for example Aram aramark is basically the dining agency of asu so i did not apply to aramark or i did not go speak up like i don't do any offline applications as such people do that too like you can just walk up to let's say subway on campus or starbucks on campus and tell them that hey i want to work and do you have any openings so i did not do any of the dining so this is just the on-campus portal i didn't do any dining applications because i was not particularly interested in that uh you know area because i think it's very labor intensive you know if you're working for four hours in in that particular uh, area like let's say you're you're working at starbucks or let's say you're working at subway it, it does good, provide like a good experience but for a master student i think it takes a lot of energy and effort out of your like day to day and you all you're already buried with like coursework and let's say projects i'm also part of like table tennis team i i go to the gym almost every day so it's it was very difficult for me to kind of allocate that effort so i i only focused on like jobs that did that were not labor intensive i would say like research aid and assistant jobs are like require less labor obviously like less physical effort than all these dining jobs that is just my view next uh, there is no particular strategy that I followed. There is no as such like rule or strategy that helps you kind of get. I, I think the only strategy that I followed is quantity over quality. And what I mean by that is I did not curate like specific cover letters for each of these roles. I had only one resume and only one cover letter. I would recommend having like two resumes, one for like the 95% of the jobs, 90, 95% of the jobs that have like no technical requirement whatsoever so like a non-technical resume for that and then like technical resume for like the five percent jobs um but i didn't my resume was mostly like technical resume uh that's that's why a lot of like callbacks that i got was technical so i probably if i would have used another non-technical i probably would have got like some more callbacks from like desk assistant library aid all, all of these jobs but i did not uh and i also had like one cover letter apart from like i think 
five or six applications where I made another cover letter. So that is like very specific. All of them are like extremely hyping. That is why I created like a separate cover letter for that. Uh, uh, that is the that was the only incentive. But I thought that you know that again like this was my hypothesis that the number of applications is more important than how well you curate and just make I just made like a generic cover letter. I didn't even change the. Um, like the two designation so it was to the hiring manager so that that was it it, it has its pros and cons the con is uh, again like you're not curating it for that particular position the pro is that you can do one application in less than a minute so it takes me like 50 seconds if you sit tight then you can do one application and it's just next 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 you upload the you don't even have to upload it's already saved in the portal so one application for me took like 45 seconds to one minute in a, on, on an average so uh, I, I could do a lot more applications because I was not changing cover letters so that is that is the only strategy that I followed to mention the nine callbacks that I received nine positive callbacks that I received one was two of them required a car so that they were out I, I'm counting them as positive feedbacks because they at least reached out to me then it was a no so two of them required me to have a car because it was like far off so it was I think it's around uh, 30 miles away in a school that it was some like uh, school aid or something like that so they were they were out both of them the third one was required clinical research background because it was a clinical research aid job so I did not get it all and it was also in Phoenix so I, I did not like want it that bad as well I would have taken it if I got it but I didn't uh, and they were also offering like 10 hours so that's not good because I think the monthly payout would have been like 500 600 which wouldn't even cover like my rent uh okay so that's one again like caviar i would have taken it i was ready to take anything beggars can't be choosers the, uh, the next one was the one that i got hired for which is optimization analyst in a lab it's a supply chain and productivity logistics lab and i have to work with like dynamic programming and linear programming so it's very technical so that's the fourth one i also got like positive responses from other five positions but i'm not interviewing any further mostly because i've already accepted this job and uh, it's like super relevant in the field that i'm pursuing my master's so uh, it's good that i have it rather than doing like something which is not relevant the other five are one one is a data analyst job again this one is also relevant uh this i i haven't like given the final interview and probably not because i've already again accepted the offer the other one is a lifeguard which i've rejected now the other one is a desk assistant which i've rejected now uh, the other one is again a research aid for or for some specific uh student body but i don't know what it is and i'll again probably not interview for this i'll just say that you know i've accepted a job and i'm not interested anymore and the last ninth one is a programmer at Department of Finance. I don't know what this is, might explore this if the pay is like better than my existing role or maybe not. I don't know how um, like feasible it is to switch a position here. Like, uh, you know, I've just joined, so I've just accepted the offer. So I might just work here for a few months. And this definition of positive response is just like a like an email back from them. It again, it some of them are rejects also, straight rejects based on like license and stuff based on because the first two required a car and a license i i had only like a learner's permit so and i don't have a car as well so they were out i think i was a bit more desperate as compared to other everybody obviously wants an on-campus everybody does a fair bit of applications but i think i did like I, I went berserk and I did a lot many applications because first of all my expense is a little high so like I spend around 1000 to 1100 per month so I definitely required whereas like most people are sharing a room with someone else who has a like a roommate they generally end up spending I would say around 500-600 so mine's almost double and I intend to like go out a bit as in like travel here and there in the US so I think that costs around 300-400 per trip that's why I wanted to get like the finances sorted otherwise it's almost like a 90k or 1 lakh INR per month spend which is a lot I'm assuming that the pay would roughly be around 1200 a month which would cover my uh living expenses so my rent is 800 and groceries generally take up to 200 i'm including like other stuff as in like whey protein and stuff they come like i purchased a whey protein which costs like 130 dollars so if you spread in like three months then it it, it it only becomes like 40 dollars per month these combined i think my groceries are also a little on the higher end i think that it does go up to like 200 250 and the other thing that again worked out in my favor is i'll be working with like c sharp i'll be working with linear programming dynamic programming concepts 
so i can add that this into my resume also so it's not like if i'm a desk aide sure i get paid like 1200 probably the same rate but the issue is that i can't really use it anywhere else this way i get the money and i get some like legitimate relevant experience for my field again this is not the this is not this wasn't my goal i would have taken anything that i would have got and and there aren't a lot of technical roles as such i would i would say like only three to five percent of the 507 applications that i did would actually be something that you can add in your cv otherwise it's not you can't add like technical assistant when you're applying for let's say a software developer they don't give a fuck about like whether you were a desk assistant in a university or not the minus point is probably the fact that it's not 100% remote some of the jobs are remote so that's again a good thing but it's like a 10 minutes work so i'm not too bothered by it right now i'm considering pros and cons right so if 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 a particular position is remote that's a big pro because you can you get to like you know work from home and you know the timings also become a, a bit more flexible so this is the number of applications that i did 507 and you can see like i applied to everything office aid radiation safety support whatnot research lab aid whatever comes in my way so i was not choosy at all i probably did not even skip like one job probably like a couple of jobs which were like i remember there was like a stitching job which obviously required like stitching background so 303 open jobs right now so again like research aid file clerk front office aid research aid mobile so all like i said like most of these jobs won't be uh oh this looks interesting yeah the pay is high as well because it's like a technical role uh desired qualifications desired okay a relevant research and lab experience i'm not sure whether it's a research heavy role or like a practical technical role for example this is a lab aid roughly the pay is 13 to 17 dollars this is generally the range uh kids camp counselor 13 yep so these are the kind of jobs computing support that's it for this video. Thank you for attending my career counseling session. ACU, signing off.